Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a really cool video for you where I'm going to show you an end-to-end -end project here using Apache Kafka, uh, not Flink, Airflow, and Spark. Um, so the holy trinity of kind of big popular Apache projects. And what I'm gonna show you how to do is basically take a Kafka stream, batch process every 100 rows, Airflow is going to pick up those 100 entries within your Kafka stream then it's going to do some light data cleaning, some batch processing of that data before making it available to a Spark script and running on a Spark cluster that will then use that data for a machine learning workflow. Um, so great useful for, you know, kind of template for really any kind of large scale data processing where you, know, you have data constantly arriving from Kafka, you want to batch process it, um, but you need the horsepower of Spark to actually do that data processing at scale. Um, so that's what we're gonna do today. So first thing we're gonna do is just create a new Airflow environment. So just gonna open up a terminal window here and we are going to make directory and to end Apache CD in there and then astro dev init and this will just create a uh, Astro directory for us to use. So you can see here uh, under this Astro directory here. Um, don't really need to create anything for Kafka and Spark because those scripts will run kind of self-contained as long as you have Kafka and Spark environments available. If you're looking for information on how to do that, check out my dedicated videos there. Um, and so just for sake of having everything together, I'm gonna toss this Kafka script that we're gonna create to actually just mimic creating data here uh, within my include directory. So we will uh, call this Kafka generation dot hi and then within this file we're just going to create a really simple generation kafka producer so from kafka import kafka producer import json and time and then what we're going to do is just define a function that is going to use the kafka producer python object uh, to just produce uh, some very very simple information from our local host 9092 so they just endpoint there taking a JSON and just dumping it uh, into our Kafka endpoint. And then we're basically gonna say for I in range 1000, so simulating a thousand messages, send all these different topics to this Kafka stream and just produce a thousand different messages. And then once we're done with that, just flush and close that out. So you don't just have a producer sitting idly by here. Um, then what we're gonna do is just define it name equals main, Kafka, messages, my topic, so just basically creating a self-contained function here uh, with, for our Kafka producer. So you'll likely have a more relevant Kafka endpoint where you're taking data from, but I just wanted to have a quick simulation endpoint um, that I can use to just have some dummy values that I'm going to then process. So now that we have our simple Kafka producer, let's create a DAG. So uh, end to end DAG.py, save this. And then, so luckily everything we're using, we're only using the Spark and uh, Kafka packages. As long as you already have those installed, uh, you should be fine. Um, but here what we have is our Airflow decorators for DAG, task, date time, time delta, and the Python operator. So just normal basic stuff. And then what we're gonna do down here is just declare our default args like usual. So default args here. And then we'll define our DAG. So here, again, just setting default args. Every five minutes, we're gonna monitor and try to pull this 100 messages, uh, catch up equal to false. And then we're going to define our task to collect those Kafka messages from that producer we created. So here, define Kafka messages from Kafka, import Kafka producer, and then we're also gonna import pandas and JSON here as well. You could also import these at the top. It's totally up to you, just doing it here. Um, and then here, under consumer, we're gonna import the Kafka consumer. So my topic, setting the name of to your topic. Um, so whatever your topic's called. Bootstrap servers in this case, because we're using the same local host 9092. Auto offset reset, so just going to pull from the earliest um, possible value. Auto commit, just auto committing, uh, auto collecting values from this topic. The group ID and then the value to serialize are just allowing us to quickly decode it from the JSON format that it's going to be sent to the Kafka topic as. Then, now that we're done setting up the consumer object, what we can do is then to create an object for messages and say for everything in, for, uh, for every message in range 100, 
collect the message and then message it or append it to our messages array. So just collating all of our messages up to 100 within an array. So if there's less messages within those five minutes, it'll only collect all those, uh, but it'll try to collect 100. And then we'll convert that array into a data frame and then take that data frame and convert it to a CSV. So pandas data frame and then data frame to CSV. So just saving it in our local file store. So make sure wherever you're saving it to is available for you to pick it up from in another task. So it could also be, you know, if you want to save it in an S3 bucket or wherever. Then what we'll do is close our consumer object and then return the file path of where we've stored it as. So this allows you to easily pass to another task the file path where that data is stored. So now that we have this file path available to the next task, what we'll do is actually start creating our next task. So here we're just going to create a quick clean data task. So this is just simulating, you know, processing that file, cleaning it up a bit. Um, and here we're just going to import pandas as pandas again. Don't actually need to do this, but you can. Um, and then data frame equals pandas read CSV. So just again, reading in that CSV from that input file, which is really just referencing that file path. So reading the CSV from that file path. And then we're gonna drop any null values. So here drop NA in place. So don't delete the whole value, just drop um, the NAs. And then we're going to convert everything to lowercase, normally uppercase values just for data standardization. And then we're going to save our, or we're gonna create a file path for a clean file first. And then we're gonna use the to CSV method again to save this uh, data frame to that file path. Then once we're done with that, return the clean file path again. So it's available for our next task, which is going to take this file and then pass it to Spark to use for that job. So here we have our task, task trigger Spark job, and then from, we're gonna import another package. So from sub process run, the reason I'm doing this is just to show you like which packages are used in each task. So I'm new format, if you don't like it, let me know and I'll switch it up. Um, and then here, all we're gonna do is just run that spark submit job. It's gonna have a, we're gonna create a spark ML job that pi. And then here, just to find all those task dependencies so everything flows correctly. And then just set the DAG object here. Boom. Now that is the airflow side of things out of the way. So now it's time for the last step, which is just creating that Spark file um, so that we can then you know, actually run that Spark ML job and it'll do something. So we're gonna go back to our include directory and we're gonna create our Spark underscore ML job dot pi. And then here, start building our Spark script. So basically what we're gonna to need to do is just import some basic ML packages and then also sys and Spark session obviously, so that we can uh, ingest that data from that CSV, then process it, use, create some vectors out of it, and then just do a simple linear regression here. So first, or the only thing we're doing here within the Spark script is just defining run Spark ML input file. And then here we have Spark session builder, so Kafka Spark ML, get a create. So if there isn't already a session, it'll create one. And then we have our data frame, read CSV, reading in that input file, and we're gonna call that in a second, header equals true and first schema equals true. Um, and then down here, we'll use the vector assembler package to assemble some vectors. So basically taking IDs and just building features. Again, this is dummy data, probably not gonna be the best results, but just wanted to kind of show you an example. And then here, we're just going to assembler, use that assembler to transform that data frame. So you have to both create the assembler and then use it to actually transform the data frame to get result, to get the vectorized uh, data frame. And then once we're done with that, we'll then you create linear regression. So we're gonna linear regress for features, uh, using features to get the value of value column. And then we're going to fit that on our assembled data. So to, uh, to actually use the model, we fit it to the data that we vectorized and then we're gonna save that result to just temp LR model. Then at the end, run spark.stop to just end our Spark session so we don't pay for that expensive Spark cluster over time. And then all the way at the bottom, calling our name, so sys input file sys.argv1. And so what this is doing is actually we're passing in this input file here as a system argument. So this, we actually are just calling in dynamically. So you, if you update the name of this file, within here or you do it or you wanna run many different Spark jobs in parallel, these will all take those different input files for those different Spark jobs. 
Um, and that's really it. It's a super simple pattern uh, that you can use for big data processing, ML workflows, where you're really using each tool board's best app. Kafka for the monitoring, Airflow for batch processing, and then Spark for that heavy duty, heavy duty data lift. Um, so hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.